it with music, beautiful music. Hello, I'm Fred Miller, and before we launch into my lecture and song on the golden age of operetta, let me introduce you to a great music fan here and a good friend named Clyde here, who... Uh, always seems to show up just as the camera is about to go on. Not a camera shy figure at all here. A uh, little background on me. I was born in Albuquerque. I uh, had a great classical piano teacher and I was absolutely enamored of Bach, Beethoven and Brahms and I was in as interested in the lives of the composers and the whole, all the history surrounding their lives and the great music as I was the music itself. Uh, that went on really a very I was very excited by it. Right through the age of 13, right the day I turned 13, the Beatles arrived in America, and suddenly my musical loyalties were somewhat split between classical music and the, the great uh, rock songs of the 60s. That went on through my teen years till after the, the summer after I graduated from high school. I hitchhiked with a friend from New Mexico to the Woodstock Festival, and I even managed to show up in the poster very prominently. Uh, that was it for rock music. For some reason, I sort of, I guess it was as good as it was going to get. Uh, I decided not really to go to college. I went very, very briefly, left and got a VW Bug, traveled all over America, settled in Greenwich Village, and at some point somebody gave me an album of Ella Fitzgerald singing Cole Porter, and here I am. Gershwin, Porter, Kern, Rogers, Berlin, Fred Astaire, Judy Garland, Ethel Merman, Frank Sinatra, Bing Crosby, whole amazing age of American popular song. I came up with the notion of doing uh, lectures in song. Each one would be a profile of a great personality or some aspect of this great field. And I started at the time, initially way back when, with six programs. And now to date I have 75 different lectures in song, each one described in detail at fredmillermusic.com. The program here at hand, uh, I call it the golden age of operetta. Uh, I think most people know, of course, what grand opera is. They think, of course, of Mozart and Verdi and Wagner and Bellini and Rossini and Donizetti and, uh, you know, everything big, you know, kings and sort of historical events and tragedy and treacherous villains and so on. Uh, but not all grand opera actually is tragic. There's the Barber of Seville and Marriage of Figaro and uh, Cosi Van Tutti, uh, you know, the Elixir of Love. But this whole new kind of form came up, something a little lighter. Uh, even the very name, operetta, sounds something light and frilly and airy and bubbly, and that's exactly what it is. It really sort of evolved, I guess, in the, uh, really in these great centers of culture uh, in Europe uh, in the 19th century. In uh, Ver Vienna and Berlin and Budapest, you have the Strausses, um, you have Lehar and Kalman, and then you have in, in Paris, you have Offenbach, and in London, you have Gilbert and Sullivan. Uh, and then you comes this great mass immigration and all these Europeans and people from K K brought all this over to America with them. And in the bargain, of course, we got the roots of what became the distinctly American musical theater. Uh, this operetta really is sort of the bridge between the old world and the new world. Um, and I think the figure who may be most responsible for creating that, bridging that gap was Oscar Hammerstein II, much later uh, instrumental, of course, in uh, writing those marvelous works with Richard Rogers. But early in his career, he was writing with Sigmund Romberg and Rudolf Frimmel. And uh, then, of course, with Jerome Kern, started writing really American musicals as well. Um, well, the roots are in the fatherland, and uh, let's go back there first. And, of course, what was the drink of choice for operetta? I mean, the spirit is champagne. Champagne's delicious bubbles, tra la 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 Banish all our troubles, tra la 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 It mellows politicians and better world's conditions. All diplomats and rulers should keep it in their coolers. We toast champagne, the essence of the essence, the king of effervescence, the king of effervescence, a toast. A toast, a total. His Majesty, we celebrate, celebrate long and late. Joyously together, we toast Champagne the Great. His Majesty, we celebrate, celebrate long and late. Joyously together, we toast Champagne the Great. 
that's the spirit. Well, of course, were people always that happy? I mean, people look back and say, oh, life must have been so much more wonderful. Well, on the contrary, I think music like operetta came out of, of course, the great, great difficulties of life. I mean, let's face it, during the Great Depression, we had songs like... To counter the difficulties of life. Well, let's look at these empires one by one that spawned this wonderful art form called light opera or operetta. First, of course, the British Empire.